All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to the Graphs and Matroid seminar. Today we have Ojan Kwan uh, at Hanyang University and IBS, uh, who's going to be talking about uh, reduced bandwidth. Um, go ahead, Ojan. Uh, thank you for introducing me. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I would like to talk about the uh, reduced bandwidth, collective strengthening opportunities in minor close classes and beyond. This is joint work with Edward Bonnet and David Wood. So we are interested in the recent graph parameter twinnies. So twinnies was introduced by Edward Bonnet's group and in 2012, 2020, sorry. Uh, and um, it was quite focused and people tried to look, try to look at this more carefully recently. And uh, we take some variations called the uh, reduced F. And so we will see that uh, what is the reduced F. Uh, basically the twinness is defined by uh, some reduction sequence. And then in the reduction sequence, we want to color some of the edges by red. So the so red edges are some special special edges. And then the tunis is the some uh, maximum real degree appeared in the uh, in the intermediate graphs. So we can replace the, this maximum degree with uh, some other function f and then we take uh, the reduced f. And in particular, so we will uh, we will look more carefully about the bandwidth function because the if a, if a graph has a small bandwidth, then it has a small maximum degree. So reduce, so bandwidth is a strictly stronger parameter than maximum degree. So we feel that uh, probably some classes of known, uh, some known classes of bounded tunings have a bounded uh, reduced bandwidth so that uh, we, can, uh, we can have an improved result. So in particular, we proved that the, so it, is, it was known that the minor closed classes have bounded tunis, and then we, we um, strengthened the result that, uh, so that the minor closed classes have bounded reduced bandwidth, and also their R powers have a bounded reduced bandwidth. And uh, we also proved that uh, we can distinguish the classes of bounded tunis and bounded reduced bandwidth by showing that uh, some bounded degree expanders have unbounded reduced bandwidth, while um, it was known that uh, there are some bounded degree expanders that have tunis and most six. So, um, so our result uh, distinguishes two classes. Okay, let me let me introduce the reduced tunis and reduced f. So we are, we are considering the operation of identifying two vertices. So as I said, uh, we will consider some graph with uh, some of the red, some of the edges colored by red. So, so we simply say that those, those kind of graphs is trigraph. So a trigraph is graph whose edges are colored black or red. So you can think of uh, user edges as a black edges and red edges as uh, some special edges. And for trigraph, uh, we denote by uh, G tilde as the spanning subgraph of G consisting of all the red edges. So, so now when, when you identify the, uh, I'm sorry. So, so, so when you identify two vertices V and W uh, in a trigraph to Z, so all edges between the C to the this symmetric difference of V and W. So let's look at the symmetric difference of V and W. Then, so now the edges from the this C to the this symmetric difference are all colored by uh, red. And for the common neighbor, for instance, the X was a common neighbor. Then the, you look at the edges from the V and W. So one of the one of the edges V X and W X was colored by red. Then we color Z X again by red, and otherwise we color by. For instance, the, the below below vertex uh, is adjacent to V and W by black. So the new edge is also. Is it clear? Yeah. Um, I, I don't understand that. I mean, in your example, G tilde is not not a spanning subgraph of G. 
Oh, so this is not a Spanish subgraph. So this is just a trigraph. And then when you identify a, uh, two vertices, then you create another trigraph. And then, so, so this is uh, just the, the, the G and the G. So this is ident one identification to obtain another trigraph. And then the if we so if we, this this is H then H tilde would be uh, so you have uh, this vertex and only have uh, uh, this so this will be the H tilde H tilde is the just the uh, remove all the black edges okay okay, okay. Right. okay. thank you. Um, yeah, so Twinis uh, parameter was defined by Bonnet, Kim, Thomas, and Patrick in uh, 2020. And so you, so defined by as follows, for a given graph G, so we consider a sequence of tri-graphs, uh, which is called the reduction. So it's called the reduction sequence if, so for each I, so G I is obtained from G I plus one by identifying two vertices. And the last graph is a singleton graph. So for instance, uh, so in the example, let's say this is the G, so G equal to G5, then we identify uh, at the beginning, so we activate these two vertices and we don't create any red edges. And then, so we identify these two vertices. Now, so the symmetric, dip, so it was, so th this neighborhood was a symmetric difference of the two vertices. So you create the red edge and then identify these two vertices to get this and so on. So this, this, this sequence is a reduction sequence of the given graph G. So the twin is of graph, is the minimum k such that there is a reduction sequence for which is the uh, maximum degree of uh, g i tilde of which i over or i is at most k. Well, here, so you can see that the, this sequence certifies that the twin is is at most one, right? Because every vertex has at most, so the maximum red degree is at most one in each graph. So this implies a twin. Uh, yeah. So twin is. So is it clear? So one of the, so you can usually see that the core graphs have twin is zero. So if you know the core graphs, so so you don't need to know the definition, but co graphs have a nice property that uh, if you take any induced subgraphs, uh, it has uh, two twins, uh, the pair of twins, which means that they have the same neighborhood. So at the beginning you have uh, twins and then, so you identify those two vertices and it is, it is the same as the removing that one of the vertices, right? So you take, so this means that after identifying two vertices, you get an induced subgraph, which is again a co-graph, and then you can recursively identify without uh, introducing any red edges. So this means that co-graphs have to units zero. So co-graphs, uh, in some sense, uh, it's a basic class of bounded units, and then units generalize the properties of uh, co-graphs. And also observe that we, we can observe that trees have uh, similar twinies, for instance. For example, so if you imagine some binary trees um, like this, yeah, so you might, you might uh, identify these two leaves to so remove, remove this part. But now, so maybe you identify these two vertices to get a one red edge. One red edge. And then similarly, um, so if we identify in below, so below this part, then maybe you might have uh, another red edge. And then maybe there, there might be another branch like this. Now we don't need to shrink the third part, right? So before that, uh, maybe we identify these two vertices to remove uh, this part. So, so we keep that um, every, 
maximum relative degree is at most two in the trees. So this shows that the trees have two units at most two. Um, I would like to remark that uh, we can, um, so we can, uh, we can build the reduction sequence in the other sense, for instance, so we can consider as a partition of the original graph. For instance, um, at the beginning, uh, the graph looks like this. So, so in the triple, so we identify uh, the two vertices, right? So, 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 so we can we can view as that uh, at the beginning we start with the partition where that uh, each part consists of the singleton part, and then the, when we when we identify two vertices, so we can we merge these two parts into one part, and then. So later, though we identify these two vertices, meaning that uh, we merge the, this part and this part, so to make uh, one part. So, so in this sense, so of course uh, we 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 write that uh, this part and this so this third part and this part is uh, linked by red edges, as, as in the G three. Right? So. So people uh, are interested in looking at the, this partition things as well, because the nice property is that uh, if you look at as a partition, then at some point, so in in GI, so if you have uh, two parts, uh, which is uh, still the black edges between them, uh, which means that that is the complete bipartite graphs between these two parts. So there was uh, no distinction between the two vertices when you identify. So this makes uh, uh, useful to deal with uh, these things. So this is just a remark. So the CRM by so so there was a several sequence of papers about units from the the bonus group, and if you look at the first two papers, they prove that uh, these kind of classes have bounded units and reduction sequence can be obtained in polynomial time. For instance, perhaps a bounded rank with and also the graphs of bounded tree, a tree with, and also KT minor free graphs and MAC graphs and some proper subclasses of permutation graphs and so on. So the interesting part to me was that uh, usually the, if we define uh, some graph with parameters, then for instance, planar graphs or KT minor free graphs have unbound, right? For instance, trees or rank with, have unbound, unbounded on the grid, yeah. but uh, this tune is captures the both the graphs of bounded rank with and KT minor free graphs. So it, it, it seems an interesting parameter to capture both, both things. And the interesting application is that the Apple model checking can be solved in APT time parameters by uh, the you know, formula size and the tune So, yeah, it also has a nice application. So, so we are focusing on the discrete parameter tunis, and then we want to um, take uh, some variations of uh, tunis. So we consider any natural graph parameter f, and we define. So we define you uh, know exactly the same way. So we say that uh, uh, some. Uh, so reduce f over graph g is the minimum case such that there is a reduction sequence such that uh, if you look at the f of uh, gi tilde, then the maximum value is m most k. So we will denote this parameter by f down arrow. So in this notation, so you can, so we denote by uh, delta, the maximum degree of a graph, then delta down arrow is the, the tunis of graph. And this kind of top, uh, variations has been already considered in the tunis six paper mm -hmm. that uh, if they show that uh, if you consider the F as a component size, maximum size of the component, mm -hmm. uh, then it, the, the parameter will be equivalent to the rank width. And if you consider the F as a number of edges in the graph, then this will, this is equivalent to linear increase of the graph. Yeah. 
but they did not define the, in a general sense, the reduced F, but they consider that these two specific uh, situations. The first observation is that uh, if F is bounded on all stars, the reduced F is uh, always bounded. So it's the, in some sense, it's not interesting because uh, so given any graph, so you can order the vertices in the arbitrary way, for instance, V1, V2, V3, and so on. And then we simply identify uh, by recursively identifying first two vertices. Then um, it might have uh, some red edges, but red edges starting from the, this, the most left vertices, right? You know, star like this. And then after we identify the next two vertices, then you get a some, some star like this. Yeah, so we don't have any black edges from the second vertices. So all the red, red graphs will be just a star. So because F is bounded on all stars, so, so reduce F should be bounded on that vertex. So in some sense, uh, we should take uh, F, uh, which is uh, unbounded on all stars. So it's the maximum degrees of such things, right? So, so basically, so we want to look at the, some parameters uh, combined with the delta, like a tree with plus delta, or strictly uh, smaller than, or, or bounded by a function of that. For instance, uh, so we consider the bandwidth and so, max, so maximum component size and so on. So we are more focused on the, these, these four parameters because uh, it is known that the maximum component size is, is equivalent to reduced maximum component size equivalent to rank width and maximum number of edges is equivalent to linear rank width. But this kind of parameter, the above four parameters are not known before. So the basic question is that the, can you distinguish these uh, these classes? For instance, class of bounded tunis are really different from the classes of bounded three with plus delta. We use the three with three with plus delta also. Um, so so we proved we observed that uh, it it is easy to distinguish these two classes. For instance, if you want to distinguish these two classes. So it is sufficient to know that uh, the graphs of bounded tunis but large, arbitrarily large classics. For instance, binary tree is a such a classes. And then what you do is that uh, you collect uh, all, all the graphs obtained from the binary tree by replacing each vertex with uh, some huge complete bipartite graphs. And then you join the two adjacent uh, vertices. So here are the two adjacent um, complete bipartite graphs by uh, matching. So you join by uh, some complete matching and complete matching and complete matching. And so perfect matching, yeah, perfect matching between the two complete bipartite graphs. Um, then, so you, you you can have a feeling that the, if you identify the sufficiently many vertices in only one part, so without identifying any part, then so you already have uh, some large red uh, red edge here because uh, uh, most, so all vertices in the one part have a uh, distinct neighborhoods on the other part. So if you identify many vertices in the complete bipartite graphs, then you already get the large delta. So so it seems that uh, the only way to uh, so identify without in, without introducing the large red degree is that uh, you identify uh, some two vertices and then you identify the corresponding the two vertices on the below part and so on. Then you will get uh, some large binary tree. But it's, it's, it's a, a little below above a large uh, binary tree, but it has a uh, two means. So this kind of sequence will uh, guarantee that uh, you have uh, um, bounded the reduced two means tree with plus delta, but it creates a huge binary trees. So it has unbounded uh, uh, reduced pass with plus delta. Uh, but, uh, but it's an interesting question whether the, if you look at the KT free graphs, so K, for instance, KTT free graphs, then can you distinguish these classes? 
So one of our main results is that uh, even for the KTT free graphs, we can distinguish it the bounded twinness and bounded reduced bandwidth class. So we will see, we will see that. Uh, sorry, so I, so I want to hook, I want to define the bandwidth again. So if you don't know, uh, the bandwidth of graph is the minimum case such that there is a permutation uh, of the vertices such that so let's say the permutation L from the vertices so vertices of G to the one to N such that uh, the LU the difference of LU and LV is M most K for every edge UV. So for example, so this sequence uh, gives that uh, so bandwidth ordering with the width and most two, right? So if you give a sequence like one, two, three, four, five, the different, the largest difference is two. So the observation is that the bandwidth, if bandwidth is m most k, then the maximum degree is m most two k. Because if you look at the bandwidth ordering, uh, given and so for any vertex, so you might have uh, m most k neighbors on the right hand side and m most k neighbors on the left hand side. So the degree is m most two k. So here is our main result that, so we proved that the, for every fixed integer R and every proper minor closed class C, the, if you collect the uh, uh, R powers of graphs in C, then it has a bounded the reduced bandwidth. Sorry, so we will denote by BW the bandwidth of graph. So yeah, this has a bounded bandwidth. In particular, if take R equal to one, then just says that the every proper minor closed classes has the bounded reduced bandwidth. So this strengthens the previous result that the such classes have uh, bounded the twinnies. And so we mainly use the strong product structure theorem for proper minor closed classes, which I will introduce later. So and so using that, the pro so the product structure theorem was uh, 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 so, uh, more, more strict version for the planar graphs and so on. So we can by the, just a similar tool, so we can obtain a final result for specific classes. For instance, uh, for planar graphs, we can show that the reduced bandwidth is, is at most 466, and then twin is, is at most 583. So, so uh, in the original paper by Bonnet and L about the twinnies, they also give that the uh, planar graphs have bounded twinnies, but the bound was quite large because they used uh, some grid structure theorem uh, and the bound was like two to the thousand. But uh, so we, we give a three digit bound uh, the first. Um, but then later on, Jakob and Pilipchu, um, I'm noticing some archive paper that uh, they improved into the 183 for planar graphs. And also, I want to say that uh, by Pam Morin's uh, algorithm to uh, obtain a product structure from, from the given planar graphs, so we can produce this sequence in preliminary time. And also, the, with the same tool, the, for instance, for every graph of all the genus gamma. So the reduced bandwidth is at most uh, this number. And if we take uh, map graphs from the graph of all the genus gamma, then we know that the reduced bandwidth is the big O of gamma to the four. Yeah, basically this all just follows from the product structure theorem with a similar kind of argument. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we, as I said, that we can we could distinguish the uh, graphs of bounded reduced bandwidth and graphs of bounded uh, twinnies, even on the KTT free graphs. So the, the argument is follows. So we we use the expander graphs. So for any positive integer s and real numbers beta, uh, so we say that the graph is the s beta expander if she, 
if G contains no KSS as a subgraph, and for every subset of size and most uh, n over two, so we have the, the size of the neighborhoods is at least a beta times the size of S. And we, we show that uh, if C is any class of S beta expanders for some S and beta, then C has unbounded rigid bandwidth. So while the, uh, in the twinest second paper, uh, they show that there is an infinite class of bounded degree expanders with the twinest and most six. So, so these are the main results. Uh, are there any questions about the statement? Otherwise, I will go into the little idea on the proof. Okay, we can go. So, um, so before going to the minor closed classes, maybe I can briefly speak about the planar graphs because planar graph case is a simpler. So we use the strong product structure theorem. So I want to say what it is. So for two graphs, G and H, uh, the strong product G product H is the graph on the product of a vertex set of G times the and a vertex set of H such that the, it satisfied these three conditions. Um, so just to give a definition by example, for instance, if G is a triangle and uh, H is a pass, then, then what it is is that, uh, um, so you take a vertices, vertex set as follows. So you take a product and then for, so, so the, the second, second uh, condition means that um, if uh, y1 is equal to y2 in H, then the, the, these two vertices are adjacent uh, if and only if uh, they, they are adjacent in G part. So you have to make a triangle for each uh, column. And also the, you link the passes in each row. And also the last condition says that uh, we also have to uh, add an edge between the, these, these guys. Yeah, because uh, if you, so for instance, if you look at the, these two vertices, the corresponding vertices in G are adjacent and the corresponding vertices in H are adjacent, then we also add this. Okay. So the result by Duzmovic et al. is that uh, every planar graph can be obtained as a subgraph of a uh, product of H and P or some graph H of three with and most eight and some plus P. So this is quite useful. And they, they using this uh, structure, they prove some, uh, some you know, previous unknown, unsolved conjecture. Uh, in that paper, and so the so you so later on, Ukadet, Wood, and Ni improved the, this bound eight to six. So we can use uh, this simply with a six. So so this is our product theorem, and we also use the neighborhood complex to, to better, to get a better uh, bound. So neighborhood complex means that uh, for any vertex at S in uh, any planar graph G uh, with a size M most and is three, then uh, for every vertex, the, the, it, the possible neighborhoods on S uh, is M most six times the uh, size of S minus nine. To get any bound, you can you can you can bound this number by two to the s two to the size of s. But for planar graphs, you have a, a quite a nice bound. So we will use this. So the difficulty is that uh, when you identify two vertices, of course, planarity may be destroyed. 
and it's hard to find some natural sequence preserving plants, the natural good sequence preserving planarity. Um, so we will not use the planarity when constructing a reduction sequence. And so we just uh, use that the planar graph can, um, can be obtained from a product of uh, this graph of boundary tree, trees and uh, paths. And then the, we prove by induction on the number of x in the 3D composition of H. And so, so during the sequence, the uh, planarity can be just uh, destroyed, but we can simply you know, prove by induction on the, that structure. That's the idea. But maybe, uh, as I said, uh, this bound was improved to the 100, so 186 or something. Um, by by Jacob and Pilipchu. And if you and so if you want to bound more, uh, uh, if you want to improve this bound, maybe you have to carefully look at the planarity. Okay, so I will I want to give you an idea. So let's think about that uh, you have uh, some graphs of bounded trees, say H, and you have uh, some test P uh, below, for instance, test looks like this. So pass is denoted by W1, W2, and W3, and W4, and so on. So this is, I just uh, draw the possible copies of H on the W1 and W2, and so on. So the real graph uh, is in some A here. The vertices lie uh, some A, somewhere here. And then the, there might be edges like this, like this, and so on. So the so basic idea is that uh, we, we take uh, some root back of the 3D composition of H, and then you look at the most below uh, leap vertices, the so leap backs, let's say Q1 and Q2, and B is the pair one. And for instance, if you look at the Q1 delete B, uh, and then the, some rear vertex uh, on the Q1 delete B part on W2, let's say, and uh, its neighbors are only contained in the, the because in H, the, the, the neighbors of the disk, the vertex in Q1 delete B is contained in B union Q1. So because the Q1 intersection B is a separator from the Q1 and the rest. So the neighborhoods of any vertex in Q1 delete B uh, is contained in Q1 union B, right? So, so in the product structure, so the vertex in here uh, has a neighbors on the Q1 union B on the W1 and W2 and W3 part. So we, so, so um, basically we want to merge the two lead backs Q1 and Q2, but the size can be large, right? So. So originally, the, every bag has a size and most of seven, but if you merge the leaf bags together and together, then the, leaf, the size of the leaf bag can be larger and larger and larger. But at some point, uh, if, you have a, if you have a large leaf bag, then it may have uh, some two vertices having the uh, same neighborhoods on the, the, this B part. Because, uh, so, so we simply, so we only increase the size of the leap back and then internal backs still have a size M07. So the total number of uh, the, these backs is, would be the M07 times three, which is 20, 21. So, um, if you, so if you go back to the neighborhood complexity, mm -hmm. then uh, if you consider this, uh, the, so, we say that in the planar graphs, so the number of possible neighborhood types from the outside is six times s minus nine. So the, if the number of vertices on the some uh, leaf backs would be larger than six times 21 minus nine, then there should be two vertices having the same neighborhoods on the this part. So until until so we get the size the larger than this number, we simply uh, merge the lead backs, and then so we allow to have a larger lead back. And then uh, at some point, uh, if the back if, if we get the back large whose size larger than the, this number, then we we simply identify two vertices uh, having the same neighborhoods on the internal parts. 
Uh, of course, this may uh, introduce some red edges to the, uh, the, the parallel parts, right? But uh, this part, so we will claim that uh, these uh, red graphs have a bounded uh, reduced, a bounded bandwidth or, or bounded maximum. Um, yeah, so as in the figure, so I, I will merge recursively from the W1 part, I merge Q1 and Q2, and then also the merge the Q1 and Q2 part on W2 and so on. Yeah, as I said, uh, uh, the red graphs uh, generally look like this. So, so if we imagine that uh, this correspond to uh, some path structure uh, on the below, and then uh, as, as, as in the, this figure, so if I identify the two, two backs into uh, one back in W1, and then the identify two backs uh, in W2 part. And then now I want to identify some two vertices on the, I, after unify this two, uh, the, these two backs, and then if size is larger than certain number, then I want to identify two vertices directly. Then, so it give a situation like this. So you might have uh, some previous identified part, and then current part is uh, just, uh, so Q is the, the threshold, and then the, each back has a size and most Q. And then the, after union, the, we have a size of two Q, but we, we, we suddenly identify two vertices, then you get a two Q minus one uh, vertices there. And then still uh, uh, the latter, latter part is not identified yet. So the, the red graphs may look like this in general. And so, so, uh, I, I mean that the red graph is a subgraph of this kind of structure. So it's, it's, it's these two vertices are the clicks, and then uh, between the two adjacent parts, they are linked by a complete the bipartite graphs. So as you've seen that uh, delta is uh, bounded by a, a small number. So maximum degree is achieved by uh, this uh, center vertices. And also the bandwidth is bounded because, uh, so you can just uh, simply give ordering from the, the one part and then uh, until this part. And then here, so we, I, we first order the, these vertices and then the, go to the, the, the second, second layer and then go to the first layer Q vertices and then second layer and so on. So this will, yeah, so the maximum distance between the two vertices would be the, the first vertex of the center back and the last vertex is on the, the second layer, second layer vertices. So this will be distance and most OQ minus two. Um, to give an uh, idea more carefully, so we need, so we have to introduce the, this rooted decomposition, KQ rooted decomposition. As I said that uh, we, uh, we allow the internal we, uh, we have a size m most k plus one for internal backs, but leap backs have a size m most q. So we all, so q is a larger number q, but we also want to bound the size of leap back for some number q. And so routine separation is that uh, uh, you, when you have a back, so you, so you have a sum, sum of the children and then you take a union of the, all the belongs of the children together with the back. Back B, and then the D is the consist of the rest part. So this kind of partition will be called the so separation called the rooted separation from this decomposition. And so, so our uh, so we prove something like this. So uh, we don't you don't need to read carefully, but uh, so we. Uh, we prove uh, uh, this kind of thing. So we suppose that F is the sum parameter where the, the, this this the SXQ, so which was the, the above graph, um, is bounded by a G of Q function. And then uh, T beta is uh, this KQ root decomposition where that the, the, the graph, some trigraph is a, uh, uh, is lie on the H product P satisfying this condition. So red edge uh, always uh, lie in the leap back part. 
And the separation condition is that when you, whenever you look at the rooted separation, like uh, here and here, then uh, the vertex uh, below of C have the neighborhoods on the, the all the union of B part, uh, the number of possible neighborhoods is M most Q. So from, so from the uh, vertices of C on the one slice, so if you look at the neighborhoods on the, the union of all the D parts, the number of possible neighborhoods is M most Q. And also the neighborhoods lie on the just the, the, the adjacent part. So this is neighborhood condition. And then we, we, can, we can naturally preserve these conditions when you identify the vertices. And then this implies that uh, this, so with this condition, we can show that the reduced F of uh, the graph F, large F is the most the G of Q. So we prove by induction on the, on the number of X in the uh, decomposition H. Yes. So this was the idea. So, um, so we want to generalize that this idea to the proper minor closed classes. Um, so, so you know that the, we know the structure of H minor free graphs, but also there is a, some translation to the product structure. So, so for two graphs, G and H, so we denote by G plus H as the graph obtained from the union by adding all edges between the G and H. So it's a join, join of two graphs. And to Zmovic et al. proved in the same paper that uh, they've showed that for every graph X, uh, there are parameters K and A such that uh, every X minor free graph admits some three decomposition where that every torso is a subgraph of H product P plus K A for some graph H of three is T and some plus P. Where K, K, the vertices of KA can be considered as an apex vertices in the minor three structures here. So now, so, so previous, if, when you look at the planar graphs that there were no uh, this uh, apex vertices. Um, so we have to be careful it is cost and then so, so it's not it does not say that the all graphs is a subgraph of this so so now we have a 3d composition and we have to carefully discuss about the torso right so generally the whole graph the whole graph admits the, some 3d composition uh, so where that uh, so when you look at the back so torso means that uh, so for the adjacent, so if you look at the B back and then you look at the adjacent back, um, so you obtain the torso by um, uh, replacing the intersection of B and B1 by a complete graphs. So for other, for the other backs, you also have uh, such operation, then this will be called the torus of B. And then this theorem says that uh, uh, whenever you look at any back B and then you take a torso of this back, then this torso is a subgraph of uh, this product structure. So um, the only difference between the, the, the previous the previous result is that uh, you, we now have uh, some apex vertices. Uh, so the strategy is that uh, we want to identify this uh, the apex vertices at the end. So we, we simply want to first identify the uh, all the vertices in the product part. But this is uh, this is easy because uh, the number of apex vertices is bounded, right? So we can just uh, find uh, we can slightly to increase the threshold here, the, the number Q here, so that uh, so. So whenever we have a large number, so we want to find the two vertices having the same neighbors on the above part, the internal part, and also the same neighborhoods on the apex part. So this makes that uh, we can reduce all the product structure in the same way uh, without uh, introducing any red edge to the apex vertices. And then, like, 
So at the end, we can identify the apex, apex vertices. So this means that we can, we can introduce uh, some um, uh, reduction sequence for each torso. And then we, so we have the link uh, along the, this 3D composition in the foreground. So this is the idea. And if you, if you consider the R power, then we have to be careful. So we have to, um, we have to analyze a little bit more carefully. And I want to give a little idea about the expander. So yeah, for S and beta, so, so we say that the, so record that the graph is S vector expander if G contains no KSS as a subgraph. And for every vertex set S of size at most N over two. So the size of the number, the size of the neighborhoods is N is the beta times the size of S. So we prove that the, so any infinite class of S beta expanders um, for some S and beta has unbounded reduced bands. Um, just a remark that uh, so the, the bonus group uh, have found that uh, the classes of bounded twinist, which is the bounded degree expander, that is, uh, that is obtained by this two lift operation, where that uh, so given for instance, the starting from certain graphs. And so you uh, replace the each vertex with the two, uh, two vertices. And then, so the original edge is replaced by uh, some matching between the two uh, classes for every pairs. And then the, you recursively doing these two leaves. Then, so it presents, they show that the, it, this operation preserve, preserve the twins. Uh, and most six. And then it gave us some standard ones. And um, yes, so the brief, yeah. yeah, the brief idea of uh, uh, this uh, theorem is that uh, suppose that uh, you have uh, some infinite class of aspect expanders. Uh, then uh, suppose that uh, let's say that uh, uh, so let's say there is a bound or, so suppose that uh, there is an infinite classes where that the reduced bandwidth is at most k and then we can assume that the the, the graph and the size n is much much bigger than the k and s and beta. And so, so this means that uh, this graph G has uh, some reduction sequence where that, uh, so in each uh, intermediate graph, um, bandwidth is at most K, right? Um, so at some point, uh, so as I said, uh, we can consider this reduction sequence as uh, the replacing the partition of the original graph by the merging the parts and parts, right? At some point, uh, there should be uh, some parts of size um, and needs the square root n or something like this. So at some point there, so we found the first moment that has uh, some partition, uh, which has a large, sufficiently large size. And then, uh, so we can, we can look at the parts where that, uh, so if you look at the uh, reduction sequence, it is linked by a uh, black edges. So this part should be small because uh, otherwise you have a KSS. Yeah, so this part, so black part should be small. And also the, Actually, black part is the union of this part is small because uh, so all these guys are completely adjacent to x0 and x0 is uh, sufficiently large. So if the union of the black part is uh, sufficiently large, then you already have KSS, so which will be contradiction. And also, so if you, if you look at the, the part connecting by a red edge, then the number of, uh, for it, so, 
the, the number of uh, red part adjacent x0 is bounded by a 2k because uh, the bandwidth is m most k. So the maximum red degree is m most the 2k. So this means that uh, uh, we can, um, so because also the, because the, this expander property, the, the union of, so x0 is, uh, so at least uh, n over and most n over two. I mean that this is a suddenly uh, the first found that the size is large and is a square root n. So this size is and most two times square root n. So it should be n over two. So that uh, the number of total number of neighborhoods is just to be quite large. So there should we could find uh, some um, so the red red adjacent part which is uh, large. So at the end, what we can argue is that we can find we can find some red uh, connected graph uh, consisting of so red red connected graph so something like this so consisting of a large part uh, so so which is, which means that uh, each of them has a size large so large means that uh, it's proper proportional to the sum square root n. So each part is large. Uh, but then at some point, uh, we, we also get uh, some contradiction because, uh, so now, now look at the, uh, the connected component uh, consisting, uh, containing the, all these vertices, and then look at the sequence, then uh, maybe the, between the, so, yeah, between these two parts, maybe there might be a most k minus one parts because the bandwidth is m most k. And then also there might be the m most k part and the m most k part on the right hand side. And then the uh, outside of the connected components is linked by only black edges. And so uh, the, all the possible number of neighborhoods is small. Uh, why that uh, it, it, it contradicts that uh, uh, this uh, expander condition. Yeah. So we can argue something like this. Yeah, so this is uh, all the result. And then, uh, so from the, the Tunis original papers, so we already mentioned that those classes have bounded tunis, but we found that the, this bounded rank width or KT minor three graphs, map graphs, and unit interval graphs have bounded reduced bandwidth. And so I would like to conclude with some questions. Um, so the, the, they observed that uh, if we take a reduced uh, number of uh, maximum size of uh, components, then it's equivalent to rank fix. So uh, you're kind of interesting to me. So we are interested in the question of whether there is uh, some natural graph parameter which ties to the reduced bandwidth. So we don't know about this question. And also for planar graphs, somehow we were happy with uh, having the three digit bound for the reduced bandwidth and tunis. Um, can we improve into the two digit numbers, for instance, 10? So I don't know. So it seems uh, there should be uh, some room to bound because this is just quite a general structure. And if you look at the planar graphs more carefully, then probably we could improve the, the things. I think a low bound is the only one digit. I guess. And also the uh, one more interesting question is that uh, so so if you look at the below first is so we want to ask whether there is uh, some graph parameter f such that the f is uh, stronger than bandwidth strictly stronger than bandwidth but still have a plan uh, strong still satisfy that the planar graphs have bounded reduced f so this this uh, ordering means that f one is uh, smaller than f two. If there is a, some function f pi such that f2 is bounded by pi of one. So for instance, the, if you think about the path width and tree width, then uh, yeah, so tree width, 
So pair series is uh, smaller than trees, right? Uh, yes. So we want. So we. So we. 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 We found that the bandwidth is uh, strictly stronger than the delta, uh, and then the planar graphs are found to reduce bandwidth. But we were interested in that uh, is there are some graph parameters strictly stronger than bandwidth and still have the bounded reduce effect. But we found that the, this question is certainly not true because uh, we can construct a, a artificial graph parameter where that uh, uh, until the bound, so until the bandwidth bound, uh, it's uh, very small, but suddenly it's the uh, super large on the uh, on the, the general uh, graphs, so other than planar graphs. So, so which means that uh, in, in for any graph we cannot say something like this, but still have a planar graph bound to reduce the f. But uh, to avoid that special case, uh, we introduced that graph parameter is continuous. So if there is a, some function g such that whenever so you add an edge or whenever you add, introduce some isolated vertex, that it does not increase too much. So, um, so actually, so the right question of us is that is there some uh, continuous graph parameter f such that uh, this is true. So I think this is uh, this is difficult to answer, and I would like to have an answer. Okay, this is uh, thanks. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, let's do a round of applause, everyone. If you could please unmute, and then I'll count to three, and then we'll clap. One, two, three. <laughs> Excellent, thanks. And does anyone have any questions for Ojo? We maybe have time for one, one question. Uh, you can just unmute and ask. Okay, I'll ask the obvious one. So, uh, I mean, you have minor closed classes and you have powers of minor closed classes. Mm -hmm. And it's known that if you take any first order transduction of bounded twin width graphs, then they have bounded twin width. So is it possible that if you take reduced bandwidth, a class with reduced bandwidth and you apply a first order transduction that you get a class with reduced bandwidth? Yeah, that's that's good question. And actually, it's also the our main question about the, these classes. Yeah, so we want to know such a result, and then, so yeah, actually, we are trying to look at the proof for the twinness, and then we want to we want to look at the standards, but we didn't really have time to look at that. So I think that that's still open. We don't know the answer in general. All right, um, I'm going to end the recording there. Thanks again, Ojan.